Hi there, it's John here from the team at Moat. Really excited to be showcasing with you over the next five to 10 minutes all of the core features of Moat. So I've got Moat installed. You can see it's at the top right hand corner of my browser. So I'm ready to go to start capturing voice notes. I'm sure you'll be familiar with this. This is Google Classroom's grading workflow. So I'm going to select an element that I'd like to comment on and open up a comment. Normally what I would do here is I would start to type the comment in for my student and then feed it back to them. With Moat, I've got the icon that sits within the comment itself. And when I tap it, it is instantly going to capture everything that I say. Let me demonstrate. Hi Dwight, you've made a great start to this slide deck. Why don't you let me know before the next class if there's anything that I can do to help you? Thank you. This is now ready to go. All I need to do to share that with Dwight is tap comment and that's gonna go back to him. This interactive clickable card is the beauty of Moat. Anyone with the extension installed can listen to the voice note from directly within the comment. All that they need to do is to tap on the play button. Hi Dwight, you've made a great start. And the voice note will play back for them. Easy, right? Now I'm going to go up to my Chrome extension and adjust one or two of the settings. I'm gonna turn on voice transcription and I'm going to select the appropriate transcription language. You will have noticed that my accent is English, so I'm gonna stick with English UK. For anyone accessing in the US, then what you would do is you would go and choose English US. But before I jump back and start actually transcribing a voice note live, I will say that this has also become very useful for colleagues that are teaching languages other than English. So for example, maybe you have someone that's teaching Spanish or a student that wants to capture their voice notes and transcribe them into Spanish or, or any of the other languages listed below. All they would need to do would be to choose that language and everything that you are about to see me do in English, they will be able to do in their own language of choice. So making sure I've got English UK selected, I'm gonna jump back over here into the private comments. Just like before, when I tap the moat icon, instantly the audio will start to be recorded. Before the next class, please could you make sure that you listen to all of the feedback. Thank you. This time, rather than just posting, what I'm gonna do is tap on the purple pencil icon. Before the next and you'll notice that the transcription picked up everything that I said perfectly. If there were any errors, it's super easy for me to edit. All I need to do is to drop the cursor into the box and I can go ahead and edit as I would like. This is ready to go, but before I share it with Dwight, I'm actually going to save it to something called the Moatbook. Moatbook functions in much the same way as Google Classroom's comment bank. It allows me to reuse voice notes across assignments for different students and even outside of Google Classroom altogether. So I'm gonna save this here and I'm just gonna give it a nice simple phrase for me to remember and I'm just gonna call this check feedback tapping save this has been saved to my notebook and I can safely exit and post this comment for my student because I had tr transcription turned on not only can they play the voice note but they can also read the full transcription here I'm now going to show you how I might use a notebook I'm going to go back to the assignment page of this particular piece of work and jump onto another student. In this case, it's going to be Michael Scott. I could just type a private comment in as I demonstrated previously, but what happens if I long hold on the moat icon? Well, what happens, and I'll show you now, is that when I long hold, I get my moat book pop up in the middle of my screen. And you'll notice that this is a fresh account with a fresh moat book. So I've got the voice note that I just saved called check feedback. And when I click on it, that voice note is now gonna go wherever my cursor was. And what's great about Moat is that when I go here to click post, that same voice note has now been shared with my next student. But not only has the voice note been shared, but the transcription has also been shared in its entirety. If I wanted to take it a step further, I'll show you what I can do. I can go here and I can tap on edit. Now, let's say, for example, that I wanted to translate this into another language. Maybe Michael's mother tongue was French and he would prefer to receive the transcription in that language. No problem at all. I can go to translate, choose French, and that is now done. I can just save that, exit back to my classroom, and you'll notice that has been automatically translated 
ready for Michael to view when he next has the opportunity. Okay, I'm going to go into a math assignment here. And I'm going to demonstrate something called STEM mode. So what STEM mode does is it allows anyone that has Moat installed to record a voice note with the transcription picking up anything that they say that sounds like a mathematical equation and it would do something really cool. The best way to explain it is with a demonstration, so that's what I'm going to do here. I've chosen the element that I'd like to comment on, opened up a comment, and now you'll notice all I do is I leave a comment as normal, but with STEM mode, something really cool happens. So here we go. You've made a great start to this assignment. Please could you go back and take one more look at the last question. 8x squared plus 7 equals 0. This is now done. Just like before, to check the transcription, I can click on the purple pencil icon down here. Opening a pop-up window for me, you'll notice it's got my full transcription here, and it's also recognized that I used an equation. When I click on the equation, it will open up Moat's own scientific notation editor. You will have noticed that there was a slight mistake that I made, it was deliberate, and that just means that it gives me the opportunity to demonstrate how easy it is to change part of the scientific notation in this purpose-built editor. And automatically, any changes that I make here are reflected in the transcription above. I can save it, and just like before, exit and commenting, this will then put the voice note and the transcription there for the student or anyone else with Moat installed to access. Moving on to a Google slide deck here. Now, we really believe in listening to teacher feedback and requests for new features. And this is exactly how this new feature came about. And what I'm about to demonstrate now is Moat for Slides. We've got the Moat icon that sits just above the slide deck. When I tap the Moat icon here, it gives me a window that I can move around. And when I'm happy with where it is, I can start to record my Moat. Hi, everyone. Before the next class, Please could you take a look at this photo and let me know if you think it was taken before or after March of 2020. And also just drop into the notes why you think this is. Thank you. It will think for a bit and I now get this window here. I can play the voice note back, rewind it or even delete it to start again. I'm happy with how that sounded and I'm just gonna tap insert. It's now saving this to my Google Drive, and it will find a link, and it will then embed it into my slide deck, just as it is here. Once it's in my slide deck, I can resize it, and I can move it around, and I can even jump down, and I can do things like change. If I go to Adjustments, I can change the transparency to make it an invisible but interactive hotspot. And by the way, if you use Moat for Slides, anyone that has access to this slide deck will be able to listen to the Moat, from whichever device they are accessing on, be it a mobile, an iPad. In this case, it's a Chrome browser, but it would work anywhere. We've seen lots of great examples of this, for example, read along at elementary level, or even community-wide newsletters. Now, transcription isn't automatically captured when you're using Moat for Slides. So what I would need to do, here's a little trick, is to go to my Moat pad up here, and I can click on my recent Moats. And if I open up the last one that I recorded, I'm just quickly going to pause it. All I'm going to do here is I'm going to copy this text, jump back onto my slide deck, and paste it in as speaker notes. There we go, easy. Moving on now, I'm going to demonstrate, and I just mentioned it, something called Moatpad. What Moatpad allows you to do is to capture voice notes from anywhere you are on the web. I've got a sports article here that I'd like my students to look at. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tap on the article, open it up here, and show you how to use Moatpad. I'm gonna tap on the extension up here in the top right hand corner, and where it says record a voice note, I'm just gonna go and tap that as I'm advised. Hi everyone, before we have our next class, could you read through this article and let me know if you agree with what the journalist has written? Thank you. I'm gonna jump back into my Google Classroom assignment here, but this link can be pasted anywhere. It just so happens that in this case, it works really well with this assignment. And what's nice about leaving voice notes as a Google Classroom comment is it means that all of my class can access this. 
We've also heard from feedback is that teachers have found this very, very useful when they've gone through two or three pieces of student work and they want to give whole class feedback or a little bit of extra guidance. Leaving a whole class comment as a voice note is a really good way of doing this. So to share it, I'm just going to go to post. And that's now posted that in there for me. And because I had transcription left turned on, you'll see that I've got the clickable voice note, but I also have the full transcription of the text. I'm now going to demonstrate Moat for Gmail. Opening up a new message, you'll notice I have a Moat icon appear to the right of the send button. Tapping on Moat, it will instantly start to capture all of the voice and audio that I'm sharing. I'd really recommend that you try out Moat for Gmail. It is an absolute game changer. Enjoy. I'm going to put this sent back to myself and give a quick subject. There we go. So just like we've seen in everywhere else when we drop them into comments and the like, I now have a clickable interactive card, but this time it's sitting within my Gmail. And there we go. I, really I can play that back. So how does it look for the recipient? Well, I'm going to show you. I tap on send. And if we imagine that this is me jumping into it as the recipient, I sent it to myself. I have this same clickable card appear within the email message. When I click it, I'd really recommend it plays back just as you would normally. So what happens if you don't have Moat installed, but you want to access a voice note? Well, it doesn't matter if it's a voice note left within Gmail or Google Classroom or Google Docs. Every voice note has its own landing page. I'm going to go up here and I'm going to, just like I did before, I'm going to capture the link, but this time it's going to be for the Moat for Gmail. So we've shown how easy it is for anyone that has Moat installed to access a voice note. If you don't have Moat installed, this is what happens. You click on the link and it will take you to the landing page for the particular voice note. So in this case, you'll see here transcription of what I said, and I have the voice note left here. As a final part of this demonstration, I would really like to share the activity dashboard. You can access this by clicking again on the extension and then where it says my activity and engagement. This opens up a fresh tab and it then gives me all of my moats. I can then filter by if moats have been listened to or not, or noticed or unnoticed as we put here. I can adjust the visibility of a voice note, much aligned with the comments that you, or with the settings you might see within YouTube. So for example, I can do unlisted, I can make them hidden or private, and I could even delete them. But what I find is really useful as a teacher is I can actually filter by individual students. So let's say that I had a lesson coming up or I had a review meeting with Dwight, and I wanted to make sure that we were able to look at the notes that I left him and also to see whether he'd engage with them. Now, if Dwight had listened to the voice notes, there would be little headphones icon next to the note just to let me know. So I can see here, granted I did only leave it 11 minutes ago, but I can see that Dwight hasn't listened to this particular voice note. So maybe this would be a nice way for us to start the conversation. There we go. That was a whistle-stop tour of all things Moat. I hope you've enjoyed the demonstration. If you have any questions, please reach out and we'll be delighted to help. Thanks very much.